In this video, I want to talk about Stampin' Up! ink pads, how to care for them, how to re-ink them, and just some of the features of the different ink pads that Stampin' Up! carries. We're going to start with the classic ink pads. Here I've got a bashful blue one. Now to open these ink pads, you look for the three dots along the one side. You just gently let go by pushing it out, and you pull it back towards yourself. Now you'll notice that the ink pads always stored upside down, so you've got the freshest ink on top. You can often get some ink that kind of pools there, and this is great if you want a watercolor. You can use a aqua paint or pick up some of that color and apply it to your paper. To close the ink pad, or rather to get the ink pad ready to use, you just want to take, push it in until it clicks. Now to care for your pads, because these pads do have a fabric top on them, you want to actually take and cut off any of these strings that are hanging out. So sometimes these threads will get outside the ink pad themselves and that may cause it to leak. So just take and cut those off. And then to re-ink them, you just want to take your re-inker and really just scribble on the top of your pad. So just scribble back and forth, let it soak up that ink, let it sit for about a minute or you will get those ink lines on your stamp. And then if it's still not uh, re-inked enough, you can go over it a second time. I do recommend that you buy the re-inkers um, either when you buy your ink pads or within a short time period because it's nice to have freshly inked pads and I hate when a pad is dry and I don't have the ink here ready to go. Now to close the pad you just pull it towards you and then swing it back into place. The other thing you can do with your pads is just if they get dirty take out a slightly damp cloth and give them a good rub. You don't want this cloth to be too wet because it'll start to pull the ink outside the pad and again your pad could leak. The next type of pad I want to look at are the craft pads. They look exactly the same. You can get them uninked. Uh, this one has already been inked, but when you get them uninked, you'll notice that these are a little different in that they don't have a fabric top, they have a foam top on them. So to re-ink a craft pad, what you want to do is, again, you kind of need to give it a little bit more push from your re-inker, and you need to use the nozzle of your re-inker to work that ink into the pad. So you've got to actually do a little bit more physical labor for this one. So go ahead, get that ink onto the pad, and then use the nozzle of the reinker to put it all together. If you've got a pad that comes uninked and you're inking it up yourself, you will of course need the reinker, and I would suggest applying some ink, getting it uh, fairly inked up, letting it sit, and then seeing how it is. If you need to add more ink, you can, but you don't want it over juicy because it's going to affect your stamping. And these can be cleaned exactly the same way. The other type of ink we have are the stays on inks. I always call these a Sharpie marker in a pad. They're just like a Sharpie marker. They're a permanent ink, comes in black or white. Um, a thing you need to know with these is they come with this little clear case on top. You definitely want to keep that. It keeps the pad from drying out. And just a little tip that I do is put a little mini glue dot or some adhesive under the back there and that keeps it all as one piece. You can just put it on and off. With these re-inkers, same thing, I like to give them a little shake. And you can do that with the craft re-inkers too. And just go ahead. This one's a little um, easier to apply than the craft, but it's still want to use your nozzle and just help work it in. These are great for watercoloring. So if you do a lot of watercoloring, you're going to want to get your stays on. It also is great for uh, non-porous surfaces because it stamps really well on there. Dries quite quickly. And finally, we have the Versamark pad. This is my favorite pad for embossing, but it actually was developed as a watermark pad. So it gives a great tone-on-tone -tone effect to paper. So when you stamp onto paper, it just gives a slightly darker effect. So it's really quite neat that way. But again, I like it really for um, embossing with the embossing powders. This is a newer pad, so you can see it's quite clean. Over time, your pads will become dirty. That's nothing to be concerned about. They'll still stamp well, especially because you're going to re-ink them and always have nice, clean, fresh ink on them. So again, the Versamark ink, and this one's almost out, is thicker. So you need to, again, use the nozzle and work it in. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial about the different Stampin' Up! inks and how to take care of them and maintain them. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.